A very good evening, one and all. We welcome you for our first edition of Sip Chat. Oh my God, I seem to be a little nervous right now because I have not, never done this before. Talking to somebody in front of all of you who has been mentor, not only to me, but to my teachers and their teacher as well. Professor Dalit Dastur, who qualified as a physiotherapist in 1959. The only Indian who has served in WCPT Executive Committee member representing whole of AWP region from 2003 to 2007. She was also the vice chair of AWP region of WCPT. She held the position of IAP president for two terms and member of Central Executive Committee numerous times. She was the founder of private practitioners group called PPG in Mumbai in 1992. She served as a physiotherapist in first PT school in whole of Southeast Asia by name what we call JS State Medical College and KM Hospital in Mumbai for 30 years. For these words, let me welcome Professor Dalit Dastu for all of you. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us, accepting our request to go live for all your students, grand students, great grand students, as people <laughs> the fraternity of physiotherapy. Ma'am, please pardon me. I'm going to request for your pardon and excuse because it's I, I'm a little nervous right now talking to you. You have been, you know, somebody whom we we know as you know, kind of a fatherly figure or what you call a motherly figure. Motherly or, figure, please. Somebody, Somebody, whoever, what we call, you know, in a, you know, see, this is an example how nervous I am right now. So talking to you because uh, there is so much to learn still from your behavior, from your conduct, the way you deliver every sentence, every word, what you tell us, it's like a learning lesson for us. So without taking much time, seek your permission, ma'am, to start up this interaction where we, you know, try to learn from your journey and experience as a physiotherapist. Yes, thank you. Thank you once again, ma'am. On the behalf of members of Society of Indian Physiotherapists and thousands of physiotherapists uh, in India and abroad who actually are grateful to you for making them what they are today. Ma'am, let me start up with a very uh, smaller thing to begin with. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, of your early years, your family, your school, Bombay, as it was called that time. Well, it was like this. I never wanted to do physiotherapy because I didn't know and nobody knew what it was. So it was after inter that one used to join physiotherapy. So as I was doing inter, I had fascination for microscope and I wanted to do marine biology. I was very fond of biology. But everybody said, what, you will be in the fisheries? You want to work in fisheries? They never knew what uh, it could lead to and what are the... A wide range of things one could do. So anyway, a friend of my father who was a doctor. He advised that there's a new branch of medicine, kahoya, whatever, physiotherapy. Let her go in for that. Still, people said, nahi, nahi, agar ye wo kuch chala nahi so she has to have a proper BSc degree. So I was made to finish my BSc. Two years, I did it with my, uh, zoology and chemistry, chemistry and zoology. And then I joined physiotherapy. First, I came to see it. And then I suppose I liked it because it was something which had to do with uh, human beings. And believe me, I think right now I can say I love human beings, whether they are students, whether they are old, young, and especially the ailing ones, I love them. So that is how I managed to join physiotherapy. Ma'am, you are a pioneer in the field of physiotherapy. There is no doubt about it. Can you tell us how this journey started as a physiotherapist? That's what I've told you how it started. However, I was not the pioneer. You can't call me the pioneer because I was from the fifth batch. The first batch of physiotherapy started in 50. Three. What happened was in 1952, there was a, a big 
epidemic of polio all over the world and we had a lot of them i don't want to say luckily but mrs ismail a very wealthy lady and had good links etc she her child got polio she of course took her to uh, england and got her treated but then she had to it's a long treatment as you know she had to be brought back so when she came back she had to have something so she started a small the after this was after second world war and there were lots of barracks still lying like that that this was in worli if you know uh, um, the the worli seafarers and the uh, mosque this is just opposite actually it is just next to where all india institute is now so then in the barracks she started physiotherapy with army trained physios there were about six of them they were army trained and she started physiotherapy over there gradually that place came to be known as children's orthopedic hospital which was ultimately run under the stewardship of grand old mrs mulla dr mrs mulla feroz she was also from the army she was an amazon woman six footer and an orthopedic surgeon very very strict and somebody who meant business all the time she was the one who started and after that the place next to it came to be rehab center afterwards but physiotherapy started in the barracks over there and later on took its uh, took feet now after this she thought and i think people medical field thought that we needed a school of physiotherapy we needed teaching physiotherapy in india so they approached who and who sent a team to take a recce and to find out which could be the best place to start physiotherapy they went to calcutta madras and mumbai i don't think they came to delhi i don't know for what reason and they selected bombay gs medical college for two things gs gs was a very well known place even at that time with great people like uh, dr ginde and uh, all those people and another thing another reason is ot started earlier than us okay occupational therapy was started two years earlier and that was also in the km so it made sense to have okay, uh, physiotherapy also taught in gs medical college so that is how the whole thing started and with the it was a joint venture between uh, government of india state state government and km hospital and bmc bmc mumbai so along with that they got a person deputed from wcpt uh, not from wcpt who mm -hmm. called mr jakes mm -hmm. he came in and with help from mrs page mehta mrs page mehta was a, a trained physiotherapist from U usa and she was the uh, wife of the then phys, uh, dean of kems she was the bahu of jivraj mehta dr jivraj mehta who was the dean that time so she joined in assisting the physiotherapy college and the other person who joined was our mr joshi i don't think you would have thought of it he was a remedial gymnast his handling of patients transfers etc was excellent massage of course he was a, mas a swedish massagist so his massages were very good but his handling was he was a remedial gymnast so he knew how to transfer people etc we all enjoyed uh, uh, but he was not in the teaching stream because he couldn't uh, he was not qualified that way 
So that is how the School of Physiotherapy started. And in his inaugural address, the dean said that this diploma in physiotherapy has to get converted to a degree with the uh, Bombay, uh, BM, yeah. uh, with the Bombay University. Bombay. And it did happen in 67. It took that long for them to convince, to, be get, to get convinced to start a degree over there. So that is how the whole stream started. That time, there were 10 students taken in the first batch. Okay. The 10 stu students, I, I can name them because a lot of you will remember them. Professor Shani, Dr. ML Chainani, Dr. Dr. Uh, your Delhi person. Um, Dr. Prabhakar, maybe. Dr. Huh? Dr. No, no, no. Dr. Uh, 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 Jayans Joshi. Jayans Joshi. Dr. Jayans Joshi. Dr. Golhar. Uh, Dr. Golhar. Roshan Vanya. And there was one Devi. She settled in Delhi somewhere, but we don't know anything about her after that. Like that, there were 10 of them who started, and Mrs. Sandhyal, Mrs. Sandhyal, who later joined uh, Bombay Hospital. All these people were heads of the departments in different places, ultimately. Professor Shani, on interviews, sent all of them away, different places. After the first batch, they selected Professor Shani to go to UK for a scholarship, one year, and on his return, 1955, he took over the school. And ever since he has been, he headed the school and brought it up to what we are today over here. From two years diploma to degree two years to three and a half years to four and a half years. And that's what is there today. And in conformity with the WCPT's requirements. Oh my God, ma'am, this is what happened in 1953. Yeah. And you remember it by heart like anything. You can name all <laughs> 10 of them. I mean, I'm surprised. I would not be able to name so many people whom I studied with or they were senior during my college days. No, no, they were all great in their own fields and we interacted with them. You can't forget them. You can't that's forget up, them. That's up to you, ma'am. Taking us through this history, I mean, OT starting before us. WHO came in, coming in, having a tie up with Government of India and Maharashtra, starting a PT program, and government taking so much of the decision. Really, ma'am, feel really nostalgic about it. What was yeah. the reaction of your family and friends while you were doing physiotherapy, ma'am? Well, I was doing physiotherapy. Your family and your they friends? They just didn't know anything about physiotherapy. And I had done my VFC four years in, uh, and did my zoology first, no? And then I came to physiotherapy. Okay. And the funny part is, once some friends came to see me, what I was doing in this new place, and I was conducting a hand class. Mm -hmm. I was conducting a hand class those days. And after that, these people, anybody asked them, what is physiotherapy? They would always say, oh, she plays with people's hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is how it used to get introduced. So people did not know anything. For us also, everything, all, anything that was introduced was new. It was new even for the medical profession. Mm -hmm. Even for the ward boys, it was known only as Malish Department. They all called it Malish Department. It was great difficulty that we had to change it. And it changed it to OTPT. After Malish Department, it came to OTPT. And much later, I think people got used to calling it physiotherapy department. And I think we can all understand the relation what we have, at least in Delhi and Maharashtra, OTPT Council. So I think that relation started long ago. It's nothing new. Ma'am, now since you mentioned about medical profession, I also wanted to know uh, what was the, how was the reaction or what PT profession was seen by other, uh, you know, part of medical community? How the other professionals used to see physiotherapy at those days? The closest contact we have is orthopedic surgeons, you know that, and the neurologists. And both those people at that time 
were great. They were the first. Dr. Katrak was the father of orthopedics. Father of orthopedics. After that, he started uh, MS Orth and things like that. So with that, we had very good rapport. Then came Dr. Dholakia, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Talwalkar, and Dr. Mullah Feroz. All those top people had excellent rapport with us. Where we had problem was the youngsters, the RMOs. They used to feel that these people are, they couldn't get into medicine, so they've come to physiotherapy. However, we always manage to get one up on them, be it in, in uh, OPDs or, and over there, the, the, uh, the staff was so limited that all the lectures, orthopedic, neurology, all, all used to be done with medical students. In big uh, college uh, classrooms, MLT, as we used to call main lecture theater, that's where we used to have everybody together. And even in out, all the uh, uh, orthopedic surgeons would ask questions, and we were supposed not to because we would be the second rung that way that time. But Dr. Dholke, I remember, would always say, and now you didn't know the answer, let's ask our physiotherapy friends. And we would always be there with the answer. So that is how sort of we came to know, came to nudge into the stream. And gradually we came to be better than informed, especially in anatomy. And we have to be. I always th thought that the students should come and revise anatomy with us before they go for exams. They, we should be so good. Another thing I thought was good with us and should always be with us is manual muscle testing. Nobody can do better manual, uh, muscle testing than us. And therefore, whoever failed with me in physiotherapy is if they went wrong in muscle testing. I could not stand it. People can't go wrong in their muscle test. That is how it used to be. And we have a trick. I mean, if you are an examiner, we can leave everything and concentrate on muscle testing. And if you don't, <laughs> whatever we study is of not Okay, so that is one light. Ma'am, clearly the PT profession underwent a number of transitions now, we can understand. When did you and your other colleagues feel there is a need of forming a, a professional association in India? Well, I can't answer that directly because IAP was formed in 55 and I joined in 57. So it was already formed. IAP was formed and the first president of IAP was Mrs. Kellogg. She was working, she was, I think, a Scottish person and was working in COH, Children's Orthopedics Hospital. That, as I told you, started earlier. So it was going further, faster. She had come as their uh, uh, expert from abroad and she obviously was guiding everybody, especially because for over there in Children's Orthopedic Hospital, mostly they were all army trained people. So when they formed, we had to take the army trained people also. I don't know what was the nomenclature given to them, but it was formed by then. Uh, Professor Shani had also returned from his uh, one year term in UK after taking experience. So 55 forms formed in Nair Hospital, being closer to COA, that's the Children's Orthopedic Hospital, it was formed over there. And from there, it took on. I really don't know which was the first therapy conference or any such thing. I was not involved till 1962. 1962, we went for a conference in uh, Vellore. And those days, elections used to be on the floor of the floor of the house, to by show of hands. So over there, the person who stood for vice chairman, vice president, was a foreigner okay. who was working down south, especially in the field of leprosy and all that. 
all these people came to me, charging to me, Mr. Chenani, Mukashi, all of them, they came. They said, this cannot happen. You have to stand for this post. I said, I don't know anything. This is the first time I'm coming for the conference. I'm seeing the elections being taken. Nothing doing. You put your papers. And they I stood for it and obviously from then I have been. So I entered IAP as the vice president under such circumstances. And from then on, of course, I have been with IAP all through. Ma'am, I'm listening to this, ma'am, and this is, this is, there is nothing wrong in saying IAP election has been interesting from 1962, or rather from the beginning. Ma'am, do you have yeah. some memory of uh, these IAP conferences? Because all of us have attended in the past. I mean, do you yeah. have some memories about the, maybe, I, I know you said that not the first conference, maybe, maybe yeah. other conference subsequent year in 60s, yes, 70s. Yes, yes. How it used yes, to, yes. how much yes, vision yes. used to go. I, I was also involved in uh, 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 organizing the conference at JJ Hospital along with Saroj Sangvi. That time she was heading the department at JJ Hospital. So, and she needed help, obviously. So, Gospi, myself, we, we helped her. And uh, even otherwise, we used to have good conferences. Uh, I don't think there were any... Halagulla uh, or any such thing. No, it was used to be serious. People would read papers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it would be uh, a lot of interaction between the people. Who this is something which I see is not happening. We used to have a lot of interaction between the person who presented and from from the audience, uh, because people like Professor Shani Mokashi. Chainani, they were all there in the audience and there would be a lot of interaction. With, and that, that is something should happen even now. We are all, nowadays we are hurried. We have no time. And that time we used to have time. So that is how it is. Uh, another thing, there used to be a lot of doctors invited to chair the sessions. This is another thing which I have been saying we should well, maybe I was one of them who said, why do we need doctors now? We've got people who are equally qualified and they have good know-how. We don't need doctors anymore. So we had stopped it, but it has backfired on us. The doctors do not know where we have come to now. They do not know our expertise now. And therefore, the, the rapport between them sometimes is a little less. Not that they are thinking any ill of us or less of us, but they don't know what we can do. And I think we should get back that uh, thing. It's a fantastic yeah. idea. I think we at our SIPCON, Society of Indian Physiotherapists Annual Conference, uh, mm. when you guidance and blessing, of course, we do try that. But I think now since you have said that in so many words, I think we need to do it and do it more actively and aggressively. We should involve people, not as a doctor or physician or something, as a co-worker in our health community so that they also, also that's right that that's right should have them that's completely agree ma'am uh, could you please take us back to the history and tell us of the point when iap joined wcpt and uh, what it was it like and tell us a little about your time being in wcpt as a member of the central executive committee of wcpt well we started writing to wcpt for taking us in much earlier but in 1965, they agreed to take us. I remember the, the preparations. Each school, and because we had graduates from all colleges, all schools, those were the, they were called schools. From each school, we needed to give them their uh, syllabus, teachers, how many candidates are taken, what is their uh, in entry level? How are they? How are their interviews, etc. For each of the college, we had to. So there was a lot of back and forth, exchanging a lot of things up and down, etc. And this this went on, and then ultimately in 1965, they said, "Okay, now we are giving you, granting you membership of WCPT." 
in 66, the first uh, time Indians attended the WCPT conference, and it was attended by uh, Dr. Jowle and Professor Shahani at Melbourne in Australia. I don't know what was the number of the conference there, but they attended it over there. And after coming back, I think after that, people have been going regularly, at least if not regularly, every alternate conference, everybody has been going. Now, interestingly, uh, Professor Shani, in between, directed, directed me, suggested that we should change our ethical code. That time, it was uh, physiotherapy shall be offered on direction of a doctor's prescription. So we had to have a prescription to do physiotherapy. So uh, Professor Shani said, I think nobody knows physiotherapy the best we know. So we should be able to do it. And therefore, he changed the ethical code to say we should be able to give physiotherapy, render physiotherapy to anyone who needs it and only physiotherapy and nothing else, but need not be with the doctor's prescription. That was my next question, ma'am. How this first contact practice started? That is my next question. Yeah, so now I'm leading you to it. Please. So this meant that this was first contact physiotherapy. So within three, three, four years after this, WCPT sent us a notice. Your ethical code is not in conformity with that of WCPT. So you will be chucked out from WCPT if you don't change it. There it started. And I think I was on the international desk and the amount of like letters I've written is phenomenal. I think they will have those letters probably. Ma'am, please correct five. me. I understood now. You mean to say India took a leave of starting a first contact practice? That's right. That's right. I will, I will tell you what happened even afterwards in WCPT. Right. So this is what happened. And they, they were hell-bent that you have to pull it back, pull it back. And the letters we were writing, we were, uh, Professor Shani would make me go through uh, dictionary, dictionary meaning, whatever you wrote, I hope you, it was right. And, and I mean, he also was after me and behind me. He was all the time helping me to write the letters, et cetera. A time came when they said, we are meeting in South Africa. If you don't send us the changed ethical code, we'll take a decision to remove you from WCP. Before that, we had our meeting. I think it was in Chandigarh, I'm not very sure. There was a big hangama. The whole lot of general body got up. We can't be out of WCPT, pull back. We don't want that. We'll always work with doctor's uh, prescription, but pull back that we don't want to be out. Everybody, even a lot of senior members also were of the opinion, let's pull back. We can't, with the difficulty we've managed to get in, we should pull back. I tried to explain, explain, explain. Ultimately, I left saying, please, please give me a chance. If they're saying that we'll be able, we'll chuck you out, at that time I'll pull back. But please, let's not do it right now. We've still got a year. Let's not do it just now. So thank God for that. We got back the letter. No, because that last letter I said, our general body has taken this decision that we have ample uh, reason to change it. And we have given, we have uh, accepted your views. And in previous year, our previous correspondence, we had put, sirs had put it and in consultation with, we will take up physiotherapy, we will render physiotherapy to a person who requires, who comes to us for physiotherapy and in consultation with a medical practitioner. So, then these people agreed and they said, 
okay, we are not chucking you out. And everybody, thank God that day I felt I couldn't sleep. I said, supposing these people don't agree, that's going to be terrible. To pull back is going to be terrible. All this happened. We managed. We are going ahead with it. In, uh, it was in Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv, we get uh, uh, this thing that there is a, uh, 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 something from Australians saying that we want to go in for first contact physiotherapy. And WCPT is considering. I was so mad. I was so mad. I went around finding every Australian and telling them, you are not the first. We were the first. And we were bamboozled. We were treated as though we were going to be thrown out. We were the first. I went to even Brenda. And I told Brenda, I said, Brenda, you know India was the first to start with this. She would evade me. She didn't want to listen. She would think very, she was very busy. But I made my point. I think they all realized that that was it. Because in that, con that year, WCPT changed its ethical code, saying that all can have their own way of looking at it, and everybody may be able to use their own ethical code. I'm so that is how they managed to get the Australians in. They didn't have to be told, okay, you'll be get, uh, told to get out. They took out, and ultimately everything is fine. And so, Kalu Ram Guru Ram ho gaya thoda. So, so great to listen to this, ma'am. We feel a lot of, uh, suddenly we feel, uh, you know, uh, like how great it was when you guys started this, what all you have gone through this. I mean, Professor Sani, Professor Mukashi, yourself. I mean, thinking about going as a first contact practice, going and fighting with the world. World, world. The whole world. Yes. And then seeing other people claiming it. And now I see new generation think about it. And they want to, you know, copy what other world are doing it before and realizing. Thanks yeah, to yeah. you, ma'am, for that bringing us to, uh, you know, into the knowledge of all of us. Ma'am, what's your thought? Like, how this manual therapy started? That seems to be very popular these days. <laughs> manual therapy started. <laughs> manual therapy. Well, this was uh, way back in 75 or 76. There was a pain conference. And Saroj was with pain. Uh, uh, performa and the, the print, uh, international. I think she still pain. works very actively with. Yes, yeah, she she does. So that time, she all of a sudden in the afternoon calls me up, and she says, "Dollar, there is a, there is one fellow who showed something, which I think you will like it, and you will really like it." And he is there for only one more day. He is an Australian. And would you like to invite him? I said, yes, of course. I would love to call him. So I said, can I talk to him? I said, yes. He was Bob Elvey. First to start neural mobilizations. He was, he was the one, huh? again, just see. So what he is. He said, see, this is an experimental model. I've done it and I have, uh, I have got a film on it. However, I'm sorry, it is a, those days, films were on spools. Film, film, uh, uh, um, yes, the theaters, they were on spools. So they are on spools, I've got a spool. So I said, no, where am I going to show it on spool? Immediately I remembered, we had a, our uh, Mrs. Irani, she was one of our senior lecturer. Her husband had a theater in, in village and he used to run Marathi films for them in the village. So I said, okay, just wait. I said, I'll go and find out if I can arrange for it. I asked her, I said, ask Jahangir, see if he can give us so she said, of course he will give. And he managed to bring that huge big machine with the spool and all that. He brought and Bob Elby came and he showed. And what was his experiment was, 
he had put colored little pins in all the uh, brachial plexus, uh, the, the cords and all the nerves and the roots, etc., different color. And then he was making movements with the arms and he showed how those pins were moving. This, he said, could be used by us somehow. He had no other, no other news. He only, this was his thing which he was trying to sell. So from this experiment, he wanted to sell to people. And he came to pain conference and he put it across over there. I don't know how he put it there. I don't know. So I was very, very impressed with this. I kept in touch with him all the time. I said, you have to come here. And by that time, he had also done a little more clinical on, but he was not teaching that. But I, he was a manual therapist. And in 1980, I, ha I was organizing a conference. I don't know whether it was not IAP conference. It was what conference? I don't know with international uh, participation. So I invited him and he did four years of uh, manual therapy spine. And he sent two of his lecturers from his place to do the, do the uh, joints. So that is how it was. But the first one, I think I, I, I should have said that first. I'm forget, forgetting it. But I can't forget it. I, I really remember it. Way back, I knew we had a student, Chanchani, Pramod Chanchani, who went abroad, uh, who went to Australia. And with Maitland, he did his full 11 months course in manual therapy. But he went and settled in Canada, unfortunately. Afterwards, after many years, he had come back and he settled in Delhi. I knew that. At the same time, one of my colleagues who was heading Nanavati Hospital before Ali, Ali Rani, he finished 20 years and he said, my department has finished 20 years. I want to celebrate. Dolat, tell me what should I do? I said, call Chanchani from Delhi. You won't have to spend too much. Call him. And very funny. And Chanchani, of course, wouldn't say no to me. He came, but he said, if I'm going to teach, I need extra hands to help me. And who do you think came with him? It was Raju Parashar. Who oh, our president, our current Yes, yes. Okay. He came. So I always tell him, Raju, you are my first teacher. I always tell him, you are my first teacher in manual therapy. After that, of course, manual therapy, after Bob but, LV came. Just a second. Before, before we move ahead, so can I uh, say that the first manual therapy workshop happened in India was in Nanavati, conducted by Dr. Chanjani and... Um, you, you could, I mean, it was not really a con uh, course. It was just two days or uh -huh. one and a half days or whatever it was. But we got a sense, a taste of manual therapy. And I somehow manual therapy had stuck in my head. I could never stop. I followed LV also all through. I went to all his courses abroad, wherever he did it and WCPT, I had done his courses. I would come back and give whatever I could. Even Mulligan, I was first in, in uh, uh, Hong Kong, first conference of uh, private practice, physiotherapy private practitioners group first conference over there. And we were there, Mulligan was there. Mulligan gave some, uh, some things, just a few techniques on the main screen. And of course he would come around and show it. I came back and his headache manipulation, I can never forget. And he came the uh, L2, I mean C2 mobilization. And he came, I, I came back and I showed it to everybody etc. At that time, we, we were three who attended it. One was uh, Nandu Chabria, 
myself and Sham Chab Chabria. He was also Sham Chabria. Three of us. Nandu wanted to start manual therapy group. And I said, I don't think people know anything about manual therapy. I also am just learning just a little taste. And how can you start a group like that? I don't know. But I would like to start private practitioners group because I had decided I was going to even leave KM shortly. So I said, I have to have, I will think in terms of uh, private practitioners group. If I, if you want, I'll just take on two private practitioners group. Now, it was in 1992, the year of Babri Masjid, came back from Hong Kong on that same night. I came back and I called up Saroj and Mrs. Chenani and I said, I'm excited. We have to have a private practitioners group. Because it's those days, I'm telling you, we used to feel that private practitioners were old timers. They were defunct. They practiced old physiotherapy. And we, in the academic field, we used to feel that they are no good and we are academicians. But now I'm going to be in the opposite side. I'm going to be private practitioner. I said, no, we've got to bring everybody up and we've got to keep updating them. So we have to form. So that is how in 1992, I formed Physiotherapy Private Practitioners Group. I wanted to be active and write letters and do things. So I told Saroj, please become the president. I'll be the secretary. And that's from, from there we've taken on and we've been having conferences and workshops and calling people from abroad. And I think we are doing pretty well. And now we've also joined SIP in some way. No, no, I think it's a great work, ma'am. There's so much I've learned from PPG as a group, what kind of work they're doing in Mumbai. Ma'am, over several decades and the growth of this profession that you have been a part of, are you happy with its progress where it is today in India and also, you know, worldwide? Well, I, I'm missing Professor Shani in this question. He was the one who could foresee. He was the one who brought everyone forward. He was the one who would change from two to three years to three to four years. Then he would say, you are with IAP, call everybody, tell them that this is what we are doing and they should also try and do things like that. He, he was a backbone. I mean, for me, he was everything. Whatever I am today is because of Professor Shani and his teaching and his forward views. If he was, probably he would have taken us far ahead. He brought in electrophysiology to physiotherapists. Today, the neurologists don't like it. They don't want physiotherapists to do electromyography. But whatever, that beside the point. So I feel that we could have done more had he been there, had people like Mokashi, Chainani, if they were around, probably it would have moved faster. But I wouldn't say that we have stagnated. We are doing well. Right now, a lot of our graduates who did our first batch of MSCs, especially, they did very well. They've gone everywhere and they've done a lot of good work. One of them I can't forget, that is Savita. Savita has done so well for herself. She's gone well, way beyond a lot of us. Only thing I keep telling her, you are not propagating. What good you are doing, you've got to tell others. You've got to get others to do it, which you are not doing. I hope maybe someday she'll do it. Maybe she doesn't have a chance to do it or whatever it is, but she has done very well in education and taking her department and college to get, uh, ahead. And I feel so proud to see how she is respected by her college and faculty also. So I feel very, very proud with her. 
I'm sure. I'm sure she is listening to you today. I'm sure. I hope so. I hope so. Deeply proud, and I remember my days when I was a student, and she was used to be, you know, head of uh, Rajiv Gandhi University Health Science Board of Academy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question. You know, I was personally involved there. A first real international conference of physiotherapy, what happened in India, was the AWP conference in 2009, and I was very fortunate. You know, I was part of that and came to know uh, you very closely that time. So, how was your experience in organizing? conference of that level or that stature awp conference first time happening in india well it was because of my experience with wcpt i i had a lot of experience of how to manage etc and luckily for me i managed to have a good event manager and with that i was able to do what i could ahp was supportive in some ways and not supportive in some ways and i had a good team to work with and with that team to work with my experience from wcpt i think we gave everybody a good taste of a, of an international conference see it, to hold a conference wcpt has very strict norms it's very strict they've got about a uh, uh, 100 pages ka proforma which you got to fill it up but this was an awp conference so it was not so bad and besides they knew me they knew me uh, and they knew me how i was and how i came to be known in uh, uh, wcpt field was i used to be there for every conference wcpt five i have attended and thanks to my brother he was working with air india and i could get a free ticket yeah that is how it is otherwise bmc never gave me even a, a damri to uh, go for it but i would uh, keep my money save my money and i had told my brother every four years i'll need one ticket so i used to go for all these and i would read papers sir would never allow me to go if i'm not reading a paper you have to read a paper so that's how people saw me saw me reading papers etc they kept seeing me then at a at at awp meeting in singapore the wcpt uh, uh, president he told she told me come and sit next to me i said okay i sat next to me it, it's very informal nobody sits on high horses everybody is there in a round so she just told me get a chair and sit here then she was writing on a piece of paper you see as a we have to give next and there was going to be election for the next election chair will go to the person who is organized this conference in wash in uh, um, singapore so for the vice chair you put in your papers you stand i said me so she said yes why not you know how we function how you know how wcpt functions so you must three times i asked are you sure are you sure and she would say big y e s so i said i would stand for vice president there was another first person from thailand and one more from some other place so there were elections and i won that is how i became vice chair of awp okay that is how we went forward Three years, and in two thousand and three, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, two thousand and three in Barcelona, they had to. By that time, there were uh, WCPT had regions, etc. So each region had to send their representative to choose the representative. It would be at the WCAWP meet. So at that AWP meet, again there was a. an election 
the, the Japanese is quite a Colonel's chap has been with the WCPT for many, many years. He was standing and uh, I said, I'm also going to stand. So I also stood. Luckily, I won. So that is how I won the election to go to WCPT representing AWP. Yes, Immediately, as soon as that was, I was, I said, I would recommend my country person, my country, Savita Ravindra, to take my place, which will be vacant. And Savita came in as the vice chair of AWP that time. And then later she chaired the PWP region as well. I think so, yes. So I think the, chair, chair, uh, the chair went to uh, WCPT and there was vacancy. Show. So she chaired the AWP. I clearly remember when I'm attending the WCPT in uh, Vancouver, Canada in 2007. This was your last yeah. year? Yeah, that was my last meeting. Yeah. Last meeting. as I, And we were so proud to seeing an Indian face, an Indian lady leading yeah. the whole Asia with specific region in WCPT. Ma'am, uh, I know this, uh, this can, can go days and days. I think we have already crossed our time. But my last Sorry. question before we end today, ma'am. I remember people calling you Ginny there. What's that reason? <laughs> Everybody calling you Ginny. See, my name in my family and this side of physiotherapy has been Ginny. Ginny is J I N I, but actually, Gujarati, Ginny means small. Okay. And I was the youngest in the family, so in the family, I was called Ginny. And somehow, these people never liked the uh, named Daulat. And since there was Ginny, they would prefer, no, no, we are going to call you Ginny. So even in my certificates, she would write Ginny and into brackets Daulat. I remember everybody calling you Ginny. <laughs> it was very difficult to ask somebody with your name. And till now, I used to feel you are being called Ginny because you could do anything in physiotherapy. <laughs> no, like, that's Ginny. That, this is J-I-N-I. Not that is J-E-N-N-I. Calling the youngest son in the family. Now you are the eldermost in the family. <laughs> family. Ma'am, with these words, thank you so much. I don't know, we can thank you enough to you and your counterparts at that time, what you have given us. We are certainly enjoying that. And this discussion, I'm sure when we have recorded it, people will listen to it and then they'll come to know what physiotherapy was in those days and as compared to what we see now. Thank you once again, ma'am. On behalf of society, I wish you thanks and wish you a long life. I hope you being a founder member of Society of Indian Physiotherapists, considering the amount of work that you have done and your accomplishment, I feel that I would have to bond several times, ma'am. I wouldn't be able to do this in one life. You are an inspiration to me and I bet a large number of young therapists around the world. You are honored to have, you know, we are honored to have you as a founder member for Society of Indian Physiotherapists. My honor too. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining joining us, taking the pain of talking to us and sharing your journey and experience. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thanks to each and everybody who is watching us on Facebook Live. We would also like to invite you to our series of webinars, what we have scheduled for Sundays. The details are here. All of you who are interested can Stay connected with our website. The details are on. You can see the topic and the speakers every Sunday at 4.30. The next one coming up is about enhancing blended learning using the online classroom by Shabna Magarwal and the Narsimhan Swaminathan. This Sunday, 4.30, you can log on to our website, sip-physio.org slash webinar to register. The link is also available on our Facebook page. Stay connected with us. We will keep coming with such kind of a discussion and all the information will be uploaded on our Facebook page. Thank you so much for taking your time on a Friday evening and listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Dastu. We will certainly keep getting your blessing in future as well. Thank you. I wish. Bye.